Hello, my name's Leisha Overturf. I grew up in a very tiny town in the southern part of Illinois. I'm a graduate from Southern Illinois University in Carbondale, where I studied photography. I've lived in Chicago for 20 years now, so this is definitely the place I call home. When I was in college, my concentration in photography was um, primarily with documentary and portraits. I fell in love with photographers such as Danny Lyon, Larry Clark, Bruce Davidson, Richard Avedon, Irving Penn, and Diane Arbus, just to name a few. And then, conversely, on the other side, I was also heavily influenced by Ralph Eugene Meatyard, as well as later on, Joel Peter Witkin and Francesca Woodman. Um, as I've grown as a photographer, I've started realizing that um, I, I kind of work on two sides of my personality, the side in which I'm still out in the streets photographing teens and adolescents and the projects about my family, and then there's the other side of myself in which I'm literally turning the camera on me in, in the venue of a self-portrait. Over time, with that, I've also recognized um, as I grow that all of my imagery is essentially self-portraits for me. I photograph teens and adolescents as a way to connect with the childhood that was lost. I photograph my family as a way to observe and figure out how I fit into it. And then I photograph the literal self-portrait as a way to um, directly have a moment with myself. As when I was in college, I had to work three jobs. I was the caretaker of my family, continually multitasking and shooting self-portraits became a way for me to connect with me and my photography. The first time I came in contact with self-portraits was actually, I had a class, a graduate level class called the self-portrait. And um, it initially, it just opened up a door to this whole idea of me photographing and documenting my emotions, my moods, and all of my whereabouts. And um, thus, I've continually done self-portraits over the past years. Um, lately, I've actually become rather consumed by the changes that are happening to my body as I age and I've continually documented my body, literally, and now I've tried to start doing self-portraits in a um, less documentary sense, unless that kind of comes to these two images which are in the show. They're from a project I'm calling The Details of Maintenance. And um, one day, giving regard to um, tired eyes, swollen body parts, I realized, um, Although I'm generally a very practical, no-nonsense person, I started becoming very impractical with concerns of changing body image, and I started feeling kind of torn in life and definitely very inundated by imagery of young, beautiful women and um, just everything being slick and always put together. And I was thinking about that, and I realized part of that maybe comes from the fact that I'm a producer in the visual business of commercial photography, where everything has to do with you know, beauty, youth, um, glamour, and slick advertising. So somewhere in there, I feel like I've started losing myself between that world and the world where I'm actually physically changing and aging. Um, one thing to note about myself when I do work, when I, when I start any project or even just pick up my camera. I'm working very intuitively. I, I don't give a lot of thought to it until I've actually just started. And then it's later after I view the images for a while, I give them more regard with the, the path and the process I'm gonna take. Um, so thus with this project, it was kind of new for me to, to shoot color imagery. All of my self-portraits in the past have been in black and white. And with this project, I felt like the color was very important to um, add to the reality and slickness. My images are straight images, no Photoshop. And um, I've started one day, picked up my camera, and I found myself tearing pictures out of magazines, you know, the slick portraits. And I started looking for um, you know, the perfect eyes, the perfect lips so on and so forth. And this made me think about 
all of the details of maintenance that a woman gives regard to, you know, whether it's the coiffed hair, the manicures, the pedicures, all of these perfect items. Um, I think those thoughts brought me to tearing these images out of the magazine. And thus you have these two images that are in the show. This image I call opposite. And for me, um, it's the literal opposite of the eyes looking one way and the gesture of my lips looking another way, as well as I feel like the viewer has the opportunity to either look forwards or look backwards. And um, it also skews the line of, of um, recognition of me, and it warrants the question for myself, which me is it? And um, this image I call conflict. And I often think about um, symbolism with photography. And these, these torn pieces of paper not only symbolize the torn feeling that where I'm at in life in general, it also symbolizes a mask and the, the opportunity to hide behind a mask and change my personality. So in this image, conflict, it's interesting to me because I feel the conflict of part of the face is very peaceful, almost a death-like peacefulness. And then part of the face is very alive and very exuberant. And this um, bright smile is warranting the question, what's really behind that smile? Again, kind of bringing up the idea of masks and, and um, what are you hiding, what are you masking? Because in life, I feel like people often try to hide behind a fake smile. And um, in the end, whether it's a fake smile or a genuine smile, does it really matter if it's full of perfect teeth and perfect lips? So um, for me, um, this project, this self-portrait project, it's part reality, it's part theater, and it's definitely um, a way for me to continually give consideration to myself as a person and how I'm changing um, with regards to the aging process.